Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the top 10 troops to trade when first starting off in Gems of War. This list will only include commons, rares, and ultra rares, mostly because they uh, require fewer arcane trade stones. Uh, arcane trade stones are the epic rarity uh, trade stones in this game, which are the hardest to obtain because there's like 20-ish different arcane uh, trade stones, so it can be a little bit hard to accumulate a lot of them. Uh, commons take uh, one arcane trade stone for the last trait. Rares take two arcane trade stones for the last trait, and ultra rares take three for the arcane trade stones for the last trait. The reason I'm not including epics or higher is because epics uh, take 12 altogether to get their uh, second and third. Uh, legends take 16 in total to get their second and third, and mythics take like an, a, some kind of other absurd amount. So this is a top 10 list for the best things to uh, consider trading when you're first starting out. Because there is, uh, trading can be pretty complex in this game because uh, trade stones are pretty hard to obtain. Um, and you need to really think out what you're going to trade before you actually just go straight into them and trading. So if you have any questions about trading that I don't mention in this video, feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I will answer it for you. So let's get into this list of the top 10 troops to trade uh, when first starting off in this game. First off, we have the Druid. Druid gets a water link that works really well in getting his ability up. Bless, which gives two to all stats on all allies, which is basically a level up on them. Plus he has fast, which will give him half his mana, which will bring him up to six. This is particularly good because he does a lot of damage on his ability. So being able to get that up quick is uh, really effective. One other thing that makes this really good in early game to have is Druid is a troop that you can just spam. You can have a team of four of him and it will be good. Uh, one pretty common compos composition that you can use with him is a Valkyrie with three Druids. So you only need to uh, level up and trait uh, two different troops. And you'll be able to have three of him who will just keep spamming that ability and getting water links, which will help make sure he can uh, keep casting over and over again. So let's go to number nine. Number nine, we have two different ones. Depending on what kind of style of deck that you build, you're going to want to think about uh, what which uh, type of troop to go. For example, um, if you have two different brown yellows, you don't want to have to trade both of these. You're going to want to make a choice. Do you want Dust Devil or uh, Wolf Knight? For example, Dust Devil does 5 damage to all the enemies, and uh, what makes him really good is he gets empowered for his final trait, which means he can do this at the beginning of the match, and since he knocks back the first enemy to the back, he can completely shuffle up the enemy's uh, lineup to put it in a different order that won't be as effective, and he can do that from the very first turn with his cast, so that's why he is really good to trait. Or you can go something like Wolf Knight, which does a lot of true damage and does even more if they're wounded, which is really good early game because of how high of a number that is. Six extra damage if they're wounded. Wounded being if they have any kind of uh, red health that's below their base HP, it'll do that extra six damage. And what makes him really effective is, for one, he gets that spear, um, air spirit, which will uh, make him do more magic, which every single magic he gets is an extra true damage. Plus, on top of that, he gets armor piercing, a 50% chance on his skull damage that will do true damage, which uh, right here you can see, based on this one, it'd be like an extra uh, 9 or 10 damage, uh, depending on how it scales. So that is a lot of extra true damage that he can do. Uh, well, the main reason why you want to think about um, upgrading one of these instead, the way that same colors work, they all use the same exact trait stones. Like any kind of uh, brown yellow right here you can see they're all basically going to be using this same exact composition and you can also see he's using a lot of yellow so when building a team if you want something like a brown yellow on your team you're going to want to be careful because you're going to be stealing a lot of uh, yellow trait stones that they might need and this is basically just like what well, an ultra rare cost you can see uh whatever it was on the first one i forgot to read it aloud but on this one it has uh 20 wins then six of the runic, that's the ultra rare trait stone, and then the, another six of an ultra rare, which is for the earth. So again, if you have a troop that needs earth, you want to uh, consider, do you want a brown yellow, or do you want to go just all brown, or an all yellow troop, or something like that? And let's just keep trading it. Keep in mind, this is an ultra rare, all of these costs. And then there's that last trait. I actually don't even have the last arcane mountain to do that, but uh, as I said earlier, uh, arcanes are really hard to obtain in this game. They're the rarest trait stones you can get. Uh, the main place that you currently farm them is just using your glory to buy the troop event packs, which if I'll go to, uh, there's actually one right here. We go to shop, 
and then um, there are you go into rewards, and then you can use your um, uh, glory that you gain from PvP, uh, treasure maps, and other stuff to then buy a troop. Like you can see right here, it gives an arcane trait stone, which are very valuable, as well as some minor trait stones, among other resources. So I'm going to buy uh, this one real quick. You can see we're going to be getting the uh, the minor wind trait stones that we need. This arcane mountain trait stone, which is really valuable. Even more valuable than this troop. In most cases. And all the other resources. So let's go back into our troops now. And now we, you can see he has a little uh, green plus on him. This means that you can start trading a uh, troop. You'll start seeing these once you start accumulating more and more uh, trait stones. So whenever any troop has a green blue next to it, that means you can trade it. You can start trading it. And now we can get his final trait now that we have all the trade stones. So let's use that. And that is how the trading process works. Now let's go on to the rest of the list. Number eight. We have Scale Guard. A really powerful troop since it's been buffed recently on consoles. I don't believe you guys have gotten this buff yet. So kind of just ignore this one. But for the PC mobile players, this scale guard is really powerful. He deals damage to an enemy, deals double if they're poisoned, and then poisons them. Really effective in early game because poison is extremely powerful early on because a lot of troops still have low HP. It's a uh, poison is the only effect that lasts forever. The only way you can remove poison is if someone cleanses it with an ability that has cleanse. And it gives a 50% every single turn that'll that uh, tar the poison target will lose 1 HP. So that is really powerful. And plus he does double damage to poison troops, which uh, can start racking up a lot of damage. The main reason you want to trade him is he has Empowered. Empowered, uh, of course, lets you start off with your ability. And being able to start with that can be a lot of damage. You can use multiple of him. If you put two of them on your same team, you can use one to cast. Then the second one's going to be doing double damage and will likely kill the target. Next up, we have Green Purples. And you'll notice here a trend that's kind of happening with some of these. We have Empowered, Empowered, and Empowered. Empowered troops are always good to trade. It doesn't even matter what that Empowered troop is. If it has the Empowered uh, trait, it is definitely worth getting. Because that means it can cast its ability from the very first turn. So either, regardless of the mana conflict on your team, it's always good to have an Empowered troop on it. Because it'll be able to cast right from the first turn. And of these three... You do want to go with Spirit Fox. Spirit Fox is an extremely strong troop. Its traits are uh, Cursed, which is really effective early on because it reduces two of all the enemy's traits. So you're reducing from the very first turn eight total traits on the uh, enemy team. It has Stealthy, so if uh, enemies won't be able to target this Spirit Fox directly, which is good because it doesn't have a particularly high armor and HP. And then, of course, the Empowered, which lets it use its ability from the very first turn. And that ability is a Mana Drain plus True Damage. True Damage, of course, is really good because it ignores all of the armor. And if you're going to be using another team with all True Damage, uh, Spirit Fox is definitely the way to go between these three. And the main thing it does is drain 5 mana. This will make sure it can counter other troops that have the Fast Trait or the Empower Trait to make sure that they can't cast early on. It also removes all yellows, which works uh, really good against any team that uses a lot of yellow. These other two are uh, more focused on uh, support. Um, Stargazer is used mainly to buff up a ally that needs a lot of attack, plus it removes blue. And it just does a lot of support. It has Bless for the extra stats, uh, Magic Spirit, which may be making it do even more attacking to whoever it targets, and of course the Empowered. And lastly, here we have the Siren. Uh, which does uh, is mainly used later on in the game. I mostly put it on here because it can gain quite a bit of mana for your team. But uh, it's basically like the Stargazer, except it has Alert for its second trait. And for its ability, it deals damage to an enemy and then creates 9 of that enemy's color. It's not that good that you can create an enemy's color, but since you're using it on the very first turn, you'll likely have all of your troops covering all the colors, so it will be able to be effective. But you usually see this with troops that have uh, traits like uh, big or huge or things like that or anything that trigger uh, on four or five matches because she creates a bunch of gems which will trigger that but unfortunately most of those troops are legendaries so of stargazer and siren you might just want to go with stargazer because i know the consoles you guys don't have spirit fox yet if you do have spirit fox you definitely want to go spirit fox because that is definitely the best of those three but do remember you only want to trade one of these because uh, how trade stones work you won't really be able to afford trading more than one of these 
So whatever team composition you want, a good direction you want to go in is the choice you'd basically go with that. So let's keep going. Number six, we have Miss Stalker. Miss Stalker is an extremely hard hitter, especially early game. And it really scales well into later game as well. It deals a lot of damage to the weakest enemy. It's that's all true damage too. So it hits through armor and then poisons them. And then if it kills, it gains another eight magic on top of that. And it basically just keeps cycling through the entire team, killing them all. It goes pretty crazy. It has Magic Link, which works really good because it has 10 mana. So if you get a Surge, you'll be able to get uh, 7 from one match and then 3 from the other. But anyway, you'll be able to, if you get a Surge, you'll be able to fill them up in two standard matches, which will uh, be really good instead of having to waste uh, 3. He has Stealthy, which means uh, no, nothing can target it directly. And then it gets Fire Spirit, which is even more magic on top, <clears throat> on top of its absurd amount of damage. Which will be able to do basically start one shotting if you have a lot of reds on your team so that works pretty well it also works pretty well with that skill guard that we just uh showed earlier as well they're also both from the same kingdom so let's keep going for blue purple is winter wolf an extremely uh good skull damage card and what it does it does a lot you can see this from this long description it freezes and then places hunter's mark on the first troop and that alone would be pretty good for 12 mana. On top of that, it deals 20 or do, deals damage to them. And then if there are 10 or more blue gems on the board, it'll create an additional five. And what makes this particularly strong is its last trait, Shatter. It deals double damage to frozen troops. And you can see here, his ability freezes the first troop and then places Hunter's Mark on it. Getting this trait will do a total of four times damage to the target that you hit because it's gaining double damage for the shatter on the freeze plus hunter's mark makes any scroll damage do double damage so like for instance this right here i would be doing let's see like 80 92 damage and on top of that it also gains even more magic or more attack because it has a uh, water brand which gives one attack per ally so it can start doing a ridiculous amount of damage really really high basically one shot unless they have some kind of trait that reduces uh skull damage so really really powerful troop next up knight coronet a really popular one as well because it's well rounded in pretty much everything uh traits leader against three to all stats which is basically an extra few levels on it on top of the standard leveling against water spirit which is even more magic because it uh, can gain up to four extra magic uh, if you have enough blues on your team. And what really puts icing on the cake it has stone skin, which is 50% skull reduction. 50% skull reduction is a ridiculously hard counter to anything that uses skulls. And it will make sure that Knight Coronet will be able to survive. And his ability deals damage to both the first and the last enemy. So all of this extra magic that you're getting, you're applying this twice. First to the first enemy, and then again for the last enemy. On top of that, it removes all the purples, and based on how many it removes, it boosts its damage even more at a 2 to 1 ratio. So it can do a hefty, hefty amount of damage, and it's well-rounded in its stats, it's well-rounded with the stone skin, and its damage output. It's good for defending and offensive. So it is a really good, well-rounded troop for absolutely everything you could possibly need. Next up, we have Goblin. Oh, you should pretty much know this. You start off with the Goblin. It's uh, like the second, third thing that you get in, during their tutorial uh, quest. It is a really common deck or a really common troop to see in an all Marauder deck. It uh, deals damage to an enemy and then gains an extra turn. What makes him particularly strong is he has a six mana cost. So if you were to set your banner to a plus two green and then get his last trait of Nature Link, any match that you take will instantly fill up his ability, even if it's not a surge, which makes him uh, really good because uh, just one green match, he gets his ability, he can then cast, and he doesn't even waste a turn there. So a very, very strong troop. On top of that, you'll be getting a little bit of extra gold. That's not too much, but he does have Human Slayer, which uh, most of the epics that are in the quest lines early on in the game um, are humans. So he'll be doing double damage to them too uh, with skulls. So that's uh, actually a pretty good trait that he has right there. But the main thing you want from his, him is his nature link. Because that really puts the icing on the cake to be able to do damage output. So let's go on to number two. Number two, we do have choices. Of these, Golem is definitely the best. It is quite possibly one of the tankiest troops in the game. Definitely the tankiest troop you can get early on. Uh, well, the most notable thing is he's the common. And commons cost the absolute uh, least to trait. 
And even though he's uh, like that, he's one of the tankies in the game. Uh, his uh, HP and armor are really high for a common, and for any troop for that matter. He explodes a gem, which is good board control, and then reduces all enemies' armor by a large amount. And then he, uh, it boosted by the brown destroy, too, at a 1 to 1 ratio. So he's really good at destroying armor and tanking like crazy. He gains one armor whenever an enemy casts, which will make sure he can tank, especially early on. That is really more effective early on than it is later on. But the two that really put it on, uh, make him strong, is he is the only troop in the game, not even Legends or Mythics have it, that have both Stone Skin and Impervious, which makes him, which is what I said earlier, which makes him one of the strongest tanks in the game. He's definitely worth considering since he's uh, pretty much tank against anything. It doesn't matter what the team, other enemy team is using. He'll be able to tank against it. And if you put a support healer or something on top of him, he basically will never die. That's how Golem works. Uh, next up is Rockworm. While the Rockworm doesn't have uh, particularly overpower traits, it has the Stone Heart, which is another uh, HP per brown ally, and then Stone Spirit, which is plus one magic per brown ally. The main thing that makes him really good is he works good with multiples of himself. You can have four or three or two uh, Rockworms on a team, and he's going to be really effective still. He deals damage to the last enemy, which is really good early game, because normally uh, people in early game don't put a back tank in their team like they're supposed to, um, because they'll probably put like something that's a lower level or something in their back slot, and you'll easily be able to plow it down with a Rockworm. And then it creates its own mana, seven of its own mana. So you can just keep spamming Rockworms with each other, maybe add a Deep Borer or some other kind of troop that spawns Browns, and he can really start rolling and doing a lot of damage. Any kind of team with Rockworms usually use two to four Brown troops as well, so you'll be able to really utilize the amount of bonuses that he gets from his traits. And this last one, Ghoul. Ghoul is not good on his own. Uh, he deals 18 damage to the first enemy, and then reduces all the skills by one, then destroys six gems. That's quite a bit of effect, but he does cost eight mana, and his stats aren't particularly high. Uh, his trait-wise, Stone Link will make sure you get his ability up in two matches. And the rest of these traits, like Human Slayer, that's good for taking out epics and stuff early on. But the rest of it aren't particularly high. So why is he all the way in number two? The main reason is um, the common use of the summoner. A summoner summons him for 18 mana. He gives uh, all allies full life and then summons a ghoul. Uh, summons, how they've been switched in 2.0 of the PC and mobile version is any time a troop summons a, another troop, that troop comes in with all of their traits. So when Summoner summons this school, it's going to be coming in with all three of its traits. And unlike some other summons, Ghoul is one of the only summons in this game that actually has all of its traits work within as soon as it's summoned. Like, for example, um, some troops have, um, like, Cursed, for instance. Uh, curse triggers at the start of the game and only at the start of the game. If a uh, troop with curse was to be summoned, it's not going to be uh, triggering that curse. But with uh, something like Ghoul, all three of Ghoul's traits work uh, after it's summoned. So that's what makes it a really good summon compared to uh, other troops that uh, get summoned. Like for instance, let's go to Thrall. Thrall is used to be summoned by Darkmaster. He's the other common alternative for the summoner that I just showed you. He deals 9 damage to an enemy and then summons a Thrall and if the enemy dies, all allies gain 2 attack. He's kind of like the offensive version of that. But if you go over to the Thrall here, you will notice Human Bond. Human Bond works at the beginning of the match, so that's not going to trigger if you summon him. And Magic Heart, this gives 1 life uh, per purple ally, but this only triggers at the beginning of a match, so that won't work uh, either. So if you were to trait Thrall, you're only getting Magic Link when you summon him, compared to a Ghoul, which is getting all three of his traits when you summon him instead. So that's kind of the difference with those two. And before I go into the number one troop to trait, I do want to quickly go over some honorable mentions for that uh, a lot of you will probably mention. If you don't see anything on this list that you uh, thought should have been, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Because I know there's a lot that I didn't because I can only put on 10 in this. So here is a quick rundown of some that I didn't. Uh, Soup Slayer has empowered. Really good. Uh, good board control. Um, gives magic to all your allies too. The reason I don't have him on the list. <laughs> on the list, uh, He's mostly used with legends. Plus one magic on troops. Uh, most of the lower rarity troops isn't particularly good. 
and his traits and that ability is mostly good uh, later on in the game. So do consider trading him, but uh, you don't need him first when you start off. Archon Statue, a really good tank, a really good anti-true damage troop. He can do a lot of damage as soon as he gets wounded. Wounded, of course, being the same as that uh, with Wolf Knight that I mentioned earlier. If his HP falls below that base and becomes a red number, he's going to be doing that extra 8 damage. Uh, main reason for his traits, he has Stone Skin. Any troop with Stone Skin is a good idea to trait. Moving on, Chimera. Uh, poisons and burns an enemy. Really strong in early game because... Uh, poison and burn don't scale later on in the game. So since troops have uh, lower stats early on, it's even stronger early on. And it does that for only 10 mana, why it's really good. It has the Arcane um, trait, which uh, every time an ally casts, it's going to be gaining one more magic, which will keep raising how much damage this does, which is going to be a lot of damage. Okay, moving on. Hobgoblin, um, very common in a Marauder deck. Uh, real well, Really well-rounded for doing a lot of skull damage, and the Agile will help him counter other skulls. Uh, pretty much, uh, if you want to make make a four times Marauder deck, you want to get Marauder. Uh, you want to get a uh, Hobgoblin traded instead of Chimera. If you don't want a Marauder deck, go for Chimera. Anyways, next one. Uh, Goblin Rocket. Uh, really good board control. If you're going to use a Marauder deck or at all Zajin deck with a Marauder deck, you're going to want to consider him. He explodes a gem, does damage, a bunch of other things, gains an extra turn. A uh, really good board control, by the way. Uh, he gains uh, Fire Link, which will make sure he can get that ability up. And it's good since he's at 11, since you're going to be needing that extra mana anyways. And of course, he has a Flame, which is every time he does uh, Skull Damage, he's going to be doing Burn. And Burn is really good early on. Uh, next up, White. If you're going to make a True Damage team, you're going to want to have White on your team. Uh, White uh, steals 15 life from an enemy. This means it does 15 True Damage, and it gains 15 life. So that is quite a bit of stuff that it does right there. And both of those scale off its magic. It then creates five purple gems. It's also the only troop left in the game that scales its magic based on uh, true damage and life at the same time. It's the only troop left that still does both. And trait-wise, it has Water Link, which will make sure you can get its ability in two uh, gem takes. It has Life Drain. You won't be using that too much, but it also has Fire Spirit, which means for every single magic it gains, it's going to be doing an extra uh, true damage, and it's going to be gaining an extra life per cast. So that is quite a bit of extra if you put a lot of red troops on that team. Uh, moving on, Lomia, if you don't want white and you don't want to build a true damage team, you can consider an all marauder team and try fitting a Lomia in it. Uh, she does uh, charms a random enemy. That means that enemy will hit do its attack damage to the troop above and below it. Keep in mind, this is not attack damage. This is just normal like magic damage. So uh, if something has stone skin, it's still going to do 100% of the damage instead of 50%. So that's something really good that Lomia is for. If it kills an enemy, it gains all of its mana back. And it starts off with Empowered if you get it fully traded, which means if it kills someone, you'll be able to um, do a lot of damage with that. Like, for example, uh, Luther is pretty common early on, which uh, increases all allies' attacks, which will be really good counter. Uh, Lumia will be able to counter that pretty well, and pretty much anything that gains a lot of attack, like Stargazer and other troops like that. So if you don't want White, go with the All-Marauder team and put Lumia in it. Flesh Golem got buffed recently on the PC and mobile version. He explodes a row, gains a bunch of life, and then debuffs all enemies by one magic, which means they just all lose one magic. Um, one main reason to get him, he has the ne Necromancery trait. This is an extra 50% souls per battle, which is good if you have something that can create a bunch of souls and put him uh, on the team with it. He's also a really good HP tank, which will make him good against cast and true damage. And basically everything that can possibly kill him. He also has that regeneration. So he's gaining one life every turn. And big. So in four and five type matches. He'll be able to gain an extra life. And uh, next ones. Other notable mentions. We have Goblin. Uh, I mean Goblin Shaman. Of course uh, if you're using an all Marauder team. Use him. Uh, he's great seven green. And then uh, give uh, life to a uh, random ally. And gains an extra turn. Uh, the main thing you want from him. Is his first two traits. Uh, Marauder Bond. Which will. Since you'll be, be most likely be using him in a full Marauder deck, that's a total of ex 8 extra life for your team. Plus it has Curse, which will be reducing all enemies by an extra 2 stats. Okay, next one. Uh, Templar we have here. You mainly want it for this Water Link, which will make sure you can get his ability quick. Templar is used really commonly to be able to survive. And in decks with Paladin, uh, Setite Warrior, and Rowani, all of these troops scale based on armor. And Templar is an absolute perfect pick to combine with him. Next one, Paladin, the one I just kind of mentioned. Uh, you mainly want him for his Air Link and his Reinforce. Reinforce will make sure his armor stays up. And Air Link will, of course, make sure he gets his ability up quicker. 
Uh, he deals damage to an enemy and then boosts that by his armor. And he can start doing a lot of extra armor, armor with buffers like Templar, Alistair, and other uh, armor buffers. And lastly, here on the notable mentions, we have Dryad. It he, uh, gives some life to an ally, then restores a bunch of life, which is uh, towards their max HP. It doesn't add, this doesn't give them a higher life. Uh, the plus five here uh, increases their max life, but this 17 heal or however much it scales based on magic. Uh, that only brings them closer to their max. It doesn't increase their max. And then it gives them barrier and creates eight extra green gems. As far as traits, the main thing you want is, uh, of course, it's a good support with the blessed and the fey bond. But the main one you want is impervious, which makes it immune to all status effects, which works really good to make this a support trip. And now that I've gone through all those other notable mentions, the number one troop to trait in Gems of War currently in this game is... Most of you probably already know what this is. This isn't any surprise. Valkyrie! Valkyrie! Why Valkyrie? Uh, for one, it is the best soul farmer in the game. Period. No questions asked. If you have a Valkyrie, level her max. Trader max. Get everything on her max. Use her in a team. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just get her in a team. Start using her. She is the best farming troop in the game. She transforms a selected mana color to blue. And then what really makes her strong is she gains souls based on her magic. And you can start gaining a lot of souls that way. And what makes her traits good? Necromancery. She gains a 50% extra souls per match. Do keep in mind there is a 40 soul cap per match. And this 50% does not does not increase it and uh what it does it'll just make it quicker for you to obtain that 40 and if you want to get that 40 higher what increases that is difficulty bonus uh vip bonuses if you happen to have any and any armor bonuses that you have that's the only thing that increases that 40. a uh, necromancery trait doesn't increase it but it makes it easier to get there and on top of that as water link which doesn't work with its current mana but since it converts to blues, it'll be helping any troops that it does. So it'll be good with Druid, Rowani, and basically any blue troop in the game. It doesn't even matter. It works really well with. And anyways, that will do it for this trading list. I hope this was helpful. Again, if there are any questions they have about anything trait-wise, feel free to leave it in the comment section below, and I will answer it. If you have any uh, other suggestions about this list or comments that you want to make about it, feel free to leave that too. Anyways, I hope this was helpful. Leave a like if you did find this helpful. It'll really help me out. And thanks for watching.